morning. How's everyone today? Happy Thursday. Another week gone. How is this happening? It does mean that we are lurching towards half term, which um, I'm not going to lie, I'm quite happy about. Oh, just need a week of not being here until late. But I do love it. So, I've got two stories for you this morning. Very different ends of the story spectrum, is what I would say. One of them is very serious and very grown up, and the other one is very silly. So I'm going to save the silly one till story two as a little bit of a treat. But the first one is also a treat. So the first story is called The Promise. Um, it's by Nicola Davis and it's illustrated by Laura Carlin. There it is. It's absolutely beautiful. We only arrived yesterday, actually. Um, it's published by Walker Books. And it, it's just, oh, it's, I just think it's a really special book. I say that about lots of the books, don't I? It's because we only have books here that are special, and that's why. Anyway, The Promise. Ready? When I was young, I lived in a city that was mean and hard and ugly. Its streets were dry as dust, cracked by heat and cold, and never blessed with rain. A gritty yellow wind blew constantly, scratching around the buildings like a hungry dog. Nothing grew. Everything was broken. No one ever smiled. The people had grown as mean and hard and ugly as their city, and I was mean and hard and ugly too. I lived by stealing from those who had almost as little as I did. My heart was as shriveled as the dead trees in the park. And then, one night, I met an old lady down a dark street. She was frail and alone, an easy victim. Her bag was fat and full, but when I tried to snatch it from her, she held on with the strength of heroes. I'll show you the picture. To and fro we pulled that bag until at last she said, if you promise to plant them, I'll let them go. What did she mean? I didn't know or care. I just wanted the bag. So I said, all right, I promise. She loosened her grip at once and smiled at me. I ran off without a backward look, thinking of the food and money in her bag. But when I opened it, there were only acorns. I stared at them, so green, so perfect, and so many, and understood the promise I had made. I held a forest in my arms, and my heart was changed. I forgot the food and money, and for the first time in my life, I felt lucky, rich beyond my wildest dreams. I slept with the acorns for my pillow, my head full of leafy visions. Let's see. Cool. And in the morning, I began to keep my promise. I planted beside roads, on roundabouts, among rubble, ru ruins and rusty railings, by train tracks, tram lines and traffic lights in abandoned parks and gardens laced with broken glass, behind factories and shopping malls, at bus stops, cafes, blocks of flats. I pushed aside the mean and hard and ugly, and I planted, planted, planted. Nothing changed at first. The gritty wind still scratched the parched, cracked streets. The people scowled and scuttled to their homes like cockroaches, but slowly, 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 shoots of green began to show. Trees, first here and there, then everywhere. People came onto the streets to see. They touched the leaves in wonder and they smiled. They took tea together by the tiny trees. They talked 
and laughed. And pretty soon, they were planting too. Trees and flowers, fruit and vegetables, in parks and gardens, on balconies and rooftops. Green spread through the city like a song, breathing to the sky, drawing down the rain like a blessing. But by then, I was already far away, planting in another sad and sorry city. And another. And another. And another. And last night, in a lonely alley, a young thief caught me for my sack of acorns. I smiled and made old, the old bargain, knowing how a heart can change, knowing that my planting will go on. Isn't that beautiful? Second story, <clears throat> other end of the spectrum. That one, very serious, important message. This one, <clears throat> not so much. It is important because it'll make you laugh and that is really important. But yeah, it's by Emma Adams and Mike Byrne. It's called Who Pooed in My Loo? I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry because it's funny, but I'm kind of sorry. Published by Scholastic. Very angry looking unicorn. Which is fair enough. But who knew that unicorns could use the toilet? I mean, you know, this is a learning experience. <clears throat> in the bathroom this morning, I looked in the loo and guess what I saw? Yes, that's right. It's a poo. I couldn't believe it. I called for my mum. There's a gift in our toilet made by a bum. Quick as a flash, I knew just what to do. Someone had pooped here and I'd find out who. Maybe a dinosaur stamped in stomp stomp and sat on the toilet with one giant whoomp, then ate all the loo paper, even a towel, before rumbling out on a neighbourhood prowl. Or maybe a shark came here with a splosh. Her big shiny gnashes, they needed a wash. She squeezed out the toothpaste but got very cross when she realised we'd run out of shark-sized tooth floss. Maybe a dragon came in with a swoop to sit on our toilet for his morning poop. He stretched out his wings and gave my dad a scare and he flew out the door, breathing fire everywhere. Or maybe a giant had a big tummy ache and crashed through the roof, making all the walls shake. But that can't be right. I realised with a snigger, a giant's poo? Well, that would be much, much bigger. Did an elephant sit in the bath with a clunk, then spurt lots of water from his giant trunk? Did he use all the soap and the bubble bath too, before realising he needed the loo? What if a lion had it in with a rah, feeling upset because his bottom was sore? I bet he growled loudly and shook out his mane. He probably ate too much breakfast again. Or maybe the poo was left here by an elf who sat on our toilet instead of a shelf, singing Frosty the Snowman and Jingle Bells. Hey elf, those are not very Christmassy smells. <gasps> Look, there's a rainbow outside shining bright. Maybe a unicorn came in the night shining with magic like unicorns do although this does not look like a magical poo no it can't be a unicorn shark or big cat a dragon or elephant nothing like that not a dino or giant or elf but then who who left this poo in our family loo but now that i think of it there is one other who lives in this house yes you've got it my brother. You see, he's still learning and he's only three. He's not quite as big or as grown up as me. I'm sorry I left it, he says with a blush. It's all right, I say, but remember to flush and wash both your hands very carefully too. 
whenever you go for it when you're at home. <laughs> because sometimes we just need a bit of silly. We do, we just need a bit of silly. Right. That was <coughs> sorry, the last story for today. So um next week is half term. Woohoo! And we are celebrating with not one, not two, but three free events just for you. Um Big thank you to Brentwood Arts Council who helped with the pennies. So we have got professional storyteller John Kirk this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock. Um, this is all over Zoom, so you can just snuggle up on the sofa and enjoy. So he will be here um, on the screen 11 o'clock and it's a story hunt. Mm. All based around chicken licking. So you might have to be story detectives in that one. Then on Monday, we have got That's Not My Magic Rainbow Party with the amazing Vanessa Wolf from London Dreamtime, another professional storyteller. And again, 11 o'clock via Zoom, snuggle up. You're going to need some bits and bobs for that one to get fully interactive. So I'll post that up later just to let you know what you need. It's all easy stuff, though. And then on Halloween, which is the following Saturday at 1 o'clock, we are going to be doing a Halloween not too spooky spooky story time so come along in fancy dress on the screen um it's going to be lots and lots of fun i'm sorry that it can't be here but it's just too complicated and it hurts my brain so it means that we can do everything from the safety and comfort of your snuggly front rooms <laughs> and know that everyone is safe and secure so if you want to get involved in any of those if you pop over to our website just go onto the events page and all of the zoom codes are there all you need to do click on the link and it will take you there click on a couple of minutes early if you want to you don't need to sign up for zoom you don't need to pay for anything easy peasy a lemon squeezy i think that's it if you are not sure about any of that you can always contact us you can pop in give us a call email whatever's easier carry a pigeon and um, yeah that's it that's thursday done i will see you all very soon be kind to yourselves and each other bye